Hi guys, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel and welcome to this weird thing of an or video that it is. Uh, I decided to do something different today and today I decided to do like a real-time drawing session with you. Usually what I do is that I record like I'll visit constantly recording what I'm drawing but at the same time uh, I mean I'm just kind of like batch recording that and then when I'm when it's time for me to do a podcast I either comment on whatever I already have drawn or I just roll the drawing clip and I just talk about whatever I decided to talk in the episode of the podcast and but again I'm not showing you all of the videos a big chunk of it even more uh, like I would say I'll show you maybe like 20% of what I do and then the rest goes to Patreon where I just do videos of like of me drawing for hours but what I typically, what I never do, is do a real-time session. Every, like, all my videos are sped up, and it's not connected to me talking in that moment with you. Today is a different thing. Now you actually can see me actually recording in real life, and I'm recording my sound as I'm drawing. This video is not going to be sped up, like, I mean, the, the drawing part is not going to be sped up. And I just wanted for you to see how it really looks like. Just the standard drawing, actual, the real drawing session for me. And yeah, just to maybe show you guys the real deal. What does it really look like when you create a comic and like what thoughts are going through my head as I'm creating it. And yeah, plus I'm really experimenting with my material well, and the, the content that I'm putting out. I'm just trying to find a balance of creating something that is interesting for you and something that can be helpful for you and also something that I feel passionate uh, to talk about because, you know, all, all aspects have to be there. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And I used to do like live videos on Instagram that were kind of the same uh, type of idea. I would just draw in real time I'll just put my phone and record what I'm drawing and yeah that's what I would be doing and people can tune in and then I would record like I would stop the video uh, when I feel like it and then it's gonna be posted later on it's just a video that you can rewatch later so that was what I was doing but unfortunately with Instagram like again <laughs> I'm not crazy popular on like Instagram and YouTube platforms uh, I have platforms that I had on DeviantArt that I am that you know that's kind of died <laughs> that website while it wasn't hate as some time ago so but yeah I, I do like this idea of creating more of a real content and just really really explaining to you how does it feel to and what did it like what does it take in the moment when you're drawing so it's not glamorized so yeah I don't know how you guys are gonna react to this content I know you really reacted very well to the content when I was discussing like a very longer podcast videos and I love them and they're coming and I'm very happy that like this video about the doll themes like did well and I'm extremely excited uh, yeah because I, I love doing that but I also want to see if this is something that you might be interested in so I want to also kind of like explain what I'm doing in this particular drawing session so we're talking about the drawing uh, and yeah so basically very standard procedure is that I just go I'm a computer is making sounds please ignore it's just handling everything so I do draw as I showed you before I draw several pages at once and I have some pages here for reference so how my Photoshop setup looks like oh my god let me cover that up um, so I have a couple pages here so this is my drawing window and I have a couple pages that I'm constantly working on that are currently being inactive work in, pro uh, work in progress then here I usually have what I call like my reference board that has all the color references and whatever like maybe inspirational videos for the scene that I'm doing it's always here in this right hand corner and I grab colors from here in this particular time one I grab like from this tree all the colors then here I usually have other pages that are actually also in progress you can see this panel is done this panel is done and then actually this this page wait a second what's happening 
this whole page is done, sorry. And then I just copy pasted <laughs> the element of this page here because I need to see this as a reference, but it's, so it will be hard to just go up, see it, go down. So I just copy this fragment of this page, put it here. It doesn't make sense, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is another page that is also not finished. It has one panel to complete, but it already has a lot of panels finished. So I can have it here so I can grab colors and references. Here, sometimes if I need extra references, also the same page from the same scene, or sometimes I have pages from previous chapters overall that feature the same environment or the same character. And I like putting it in so that I make sure characters are consistent. I make sure environments are consistent. So for example, like here we have like the same cards, girl is sitting in this card. There is bags in the card, a lot of things there. So it, it has to be the same. Like it has to be the same for consistency reasons. And sometimes if I have the new character, for example, this grandma, she is, I've been drawing her for just maybe three scenes only. So I need to make sure she looks consistent. So that's why sometimes I have this and I just started this scene. So I'm not too deep into it to have reference from this actual scene everywhere. It's so yeah, I hope it makes sense. So I'm just using the reference from the scenes before with the same characters in the same setting. And you know, my process of drawing at this point that I like pre-draw my background separately, which they are pre-drawn. Like this background that you see here is pre-drawn and I just copy paste it. This is actually the same background from here and here is the same image. And, but some panels are gonna be one-offs like this one or this one. Uh, in this one, the plan is to draw, well, it doesn't make sense, but just to, to draw like a card and whatever it is from like a far above, like more like a little bit of a wide shot. So it's also like a one-off background shot. So I have to just draw this background separately for its own purposes. And unfortunately I won't be able to reuse that. And this is always a major tragedy because I like being efficient with my work. And if I have to draw this background just once, it means more time is spent on this panel. And yeah, so every time if I can reuse, I reuse as much as I can for there was um, a, like a scene in this chapter already where I had to draw a city basically for just four pages. And I had to draw the city from different angles. So it was like very time consuming, very excessive background. And I was a little bit annoyed that I had to do so much work and unfortunately it would be used in only four pages. And it took me a month to draw just four pages, if not more, was be just because oh, my dishwasher is done. Isn't that great? So it took me a lot of time just because of the background for just some very tiny scene. And typically it wouldn't be like that because if I have to draw a background, the scene is usually longer. And also that was a juxtaposition of that and the fact that the background that I had to draw was extremely complex, like a goddamn city with like a lot of buildings. Like I don't, I didn't count, but there's just at least, I don't know. <laughs> it, it looks like not every building is a detail, but the hundreds of buildings in there. So. Yeah, and uh, what I decided to do, I decided to repurpose it, to repurpose that uh, and use this cityscape for a cover. So at least I don't have to draw a cover separately. So I repurpose that. It's great stuff. So I like to do that as much as I can. So, but yeah, but sometimes it just, there's nothing you can do. And this is just the nature of work and you have to be okay with that. So overall, just, you know, the things when you create the comic and if you want to make it look good and you want to make it your best work or at least you know do your absolute best so it looks the best it can under circumstances given sometimes I just have to do those things but the timing is always my concern because you know my story is long <laughs> it's a little morbid but I actually have to think about like am I able to tell my story within my lifetime <laughs> honestly I have to calculate it's like like will the numbers add up how does it how long does it take to create one chapter? How many chapters signed the comic total? Okay, does it like does it fit within my life expectancy? That's pretty scary to think about. We'll see. Hopefully, maybe eventually, if this comic takes off, I maybe can have some help. And obviously, maybe I don't have to have like full time job and 
25,000 freelancers <laughs> to, to you know combine it with uh, but yeah usually for the backgrounds you know you guys you probably know the process it's just in, in this case it's a r real time you can see how slow it actually is uh, usually for my backgrounds I like to use a soft brush because it creates this nice blending within colors and I feel like it saves time when you drawing like it can cover a lot of surfaces and creates this blending that you don't have to paint it creates the natural blending with the colors it creates the colors that you need and then for example I can get this bright color do a stroke here like not pressuring much and then I can have this complex color in between and that's it and I can use it right away so that's just my secret I use just two brushes to be honest <laughs> to draw like just the one that is textures and the one that is soft that's really it and I don't see the point like when people go and try to f figure out complex brushes come on guys it's almost like if you it's almost like the desire to feel like there is a shortcut short shortcut shortcut it's not there is no shortcut you just have to draw well that's really in the end of the day, this is the, the secret. <laughs> in you know, you don't need crazy brushes to draw well. You just need a brush, a pair of hands, and your eyes. And sometimes you don't need even that. I know about the girl that draws with her with her feet, and she does a good job. So it's really just about drawing. So when I'm doing scenes like this. The best way to can approach like because it will take me several hours to draw this and that's why i like to shift in between the panels so i don't feel like this pressure of drawing something from start to finish and also what helps me really is just honestly not thinking about start and finish part because when you think like oh my god look at this it doesn't look like these trees that are finished oh my god oh no oh no like it puts a lot of pressure and when you start thinking like this it's harder for you to draw you start just going in circle or you know if i just go in stress mode and start to think how to make this tree looking finished i probably will skip some steps in between that needs to be done because sometimes the work it's first it starts as a sketch and then it starts as like a semi thought through sketch like with more details and only then it becomes a finished piece in the term in like in terms of texture that you put in it's when you start skipping steps it's just not good it doesn't it doesn't look good it doesn't have this level of quality it pisses you off even more I had those times when I was like please come on page or come on background piece just get done already Jesus Christ and even though like I understand why I was thinking this way definitely I was justified in a lot of ways to feel this way but it doesn't help so when you're doing the piece of work that is extremely long it's really really important to just be okay with that <laughs> like you have to understand yep it's a long piece of work it's gonna take me forever to do and that's fine and I should not want it to be done faster because the moment you start feeling this way this is where you will start resent the place that you're currently at and this is just not, go not a good place to be it's just you can't it, it, it's just you're gonna drive yourself crazy I don't know at least this is how it is for me so you have to be just okay and to me drawing is more like a meditative process like listening to YouTube videos culture analysis a lot of woke culture videos I just like listening to all of that make me think make me think about the art and I'm creating what I can do with my art I'm not always agreeing sometimes I'm like you know I think maybe we should think this way instead but this it gets my brain going and it helps me think and I think you can't go wrong <laughs> if something makes you think so yeah that's that's something that I like doing or just thinking about just overall my comic overall what I can add I'm thinking about YouTube about what content I can create and sometimes like watching other YouTube videos make me think about it as well and with my YouTube I'm still like as I said figuring out things that can be done things that like what can I do to strike this good place with 
it's what you guys want and what I'm passionate about because if I'm not passionate about it, I'm, I, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not like if, if there's anything in my life that I learned that I'm not gonna ever do something that I don't care about, especially in my spare time, Jesus Christ. Because every time I'm doing like YouTube is the time that I'm taking away from my comic. So I better be doing something that is important. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it doesn't make sense I'm actually thinking like and also like a secret reason why I'm testing this particular method is that because I'm when I'm recording podcasts so podcasts are a little bit easier to create just because I don't have to you know take my gear out look more or less decent <laughs> I usually scheduled my video recordings when my when I just freshly washed my hair. <laughs> that's, that's the logistics of it. And then I have to record several of them, put the lights on, and it takes a lot of energy. So there is something that I cannot do quickly and then return to drawing quickly. So if at 8 p.m. I decide to record a video that is has video, has me in it, uh, it means I will not be drawing today because by the time I finish, it's gonna be 10 and then I have to take the gear away, that I have to walk my dog, then, and then I'm tired. <laughs> And I never push myself to draw if I'm mentally tired. Because, again, I'm not pushing myself. Me and my project is going to be together forever. I don't want to ruin our relationships. It's very important to keep it healthy. Well, let's do it. Oh, isn't that satisfying? So the layers in Photoshop that I use, I use them almost like a incremental save. I like to work and then I can see what have been done. And if I'm liking what I'm seeing, I merge it down and with another like layer with, a, with another stage of uh, production <laughs> per se. Uh, yeah, so it's really, there's no, not much intelligence to my layers that I'm using. Sometimes if I'm creating some effects, then yes, then maybe I'm gonna do something more interesting with my layers. But usually it's just just the step process. So yeah, but yeah, if I'm creating podcasts, obviously I can just take 20 minutes, 30 minutes to record a section of the podcast, save it out, close it, continue drawing, then do it again. And for the podcasts, you still have to still have to pause my drawing on the comic, you know, because I'm sitting there, I have just train of thought, and I don't want to clicking sounds of the keyboard and everything to distract everything. And I obviously know that when I'm drawing. I'm distracted by drawing, so, and I don't want my podcast to sound like I'm a little bit not intelligent today because I do a lot of uhs and stops and pauses, or if I do, then I have to post edit it way more and cut it all out. Usually how I edit my podcast is just let them roll in iMovie while I'm drawing, and if I hear something weird, then I go cut this moment out and continue playing it. So basically it's more like proof playing yeah, I'm trying to be very smart with my time all the time. Efficiency, efficiency. Not don't be hurry, don't be in a hurry, but be efficient with what you do. So this is not the reason why I'm testing what I'm doing now. It's just I want to see if it's working at all. Because if it is, I can kill two birds with one stone, even though it sounds completely cruel. And I'm vegetarian and I don't support <laughs> killing birds. Uh, but yeah, so this way I can continue drawing and perfect and continue creating YouTube content that is potentially yeah no but like I obviously still want to have like serious discussions when I'm not distracted anywho it opens opportunities that's the that's that's all I ask so yeah when I'm creating backgrounds it's really the key for me is just not overthink them just not think about where tree should go. Like I think the best for me personally, like the best creative process happens when you, I mean, obviously there is like, for me it's years of practice, but it's obviously when you trust a little bit of what you're gonna happen to draw, like you not planning everything. So I give myself, I know that what type of background should be, it should be a road, a lot of big trees, extremely close together. That is just like create this a little bit claustrophobic feeling of this extremely dense forest. So I know the look. I have reference right here. But at the same time, I'm not pushing myself to have a certain specific tree. If I feel, for example, oh, I feel like I want to add branch here. I'm going to go and add branch and I'm just going to go in the moment. And some strokes, like for example, this cluster of strokes, I have no idea 
which one is a tree or not, or which one is a shadow on the tree. I actually have no idea, absolutely. Sometimes, if it's like, this is the tree, or this is the tree. I have no idea. For now, I'm just putting shadows and lights in there, and I'm not thinking too hard about it. Just enjoying the process and letting see what in the end looks correct. Sometimes I just put in spots, for example, here. I feel like I want to add like a lighter spot here. And I feel like it's going to create this nice kind of contrast of the branch. And I want to add branch here as well. I want to like have something here, I suppose. And I want, I'm just thinking about like spots of color of brightness and light and obviously the whole scene is extremely extremely dark and this is kind of the point because there there will be some magic elements like magic as of like bright shiny sparkly stuff and stuff like this in the scene that will it will create this again juxtaposition why today is the the day where i say juxtaposition sometimes i think this is a fancy word i want to use it and i can never find an occasion but today i feel this is the always an occasion, but it will create this juxtaposition between very dark forest and very dark panels leading up to it to extremely bright explosion and almost like the like explosion of light and almost like the scene is changing, like the scene starts to look different. So because now everything is so illuminated and we at this point used to this very dark environment. So that's kind of my plan. So it's okay that it is so dark, even though it's kind of hard to draw. <laughs> because if I want to, like, uh, my windows, they're facing south. Uh, and, you know, we're only in Canada, in Northern Hemisphere, and especially in winter, it means there's sun blowing into a window almost all day. And it is kind of difficult, because if your place is very lit, um, literally, unfortunately, um, it's very hard to draw a dark scene when the only because it just looks too dark you can't see shit in there <laughs> the truth and the only way to balance it out is for me to close the blinders but then i feel like it's so sad there's such a sunny day and i'm it's gonna be dark later on and i'm killing the daylight i don't know so today is dark now not today right now today is was dark and bright so and it works perfect that's why I try to get a lot of work in in the evening like now it's I don't know if I will cut it out but it's 9 9:48 p.m. and I like stay up drawing till maybe midnight which is basically when I finish drawing this is the time for me to go to bed when I'm drawing on the on the nights that I have them all to myself and you have to also do a lot of logistics when you're doing something like this. I scratched my arm, that's why I wasn't drawing. When you do something like this, like the comic, you have to also plan your social arrangements. For example, today my friend was asking if I can come visit her. And I knew that today I'm, I started work in, in the morning before work. And I knew that the scene is going well and the mood is there. And I had to tell her that can today I will go to her another day actually in Wednesday so we decided when but just not today today it's the drawing is going good and I just don't want to I mean I'm not doing this to my friends if like we have actual arrangement I'm not just saying I'm sorry I'm not coming but if we are deciding or everything that's what I would do and yeah sometimes you know the thing is with creating a project like this I, know, I hate calling this a sacrifice because I'm not suffering <laughs> at all. <laughs> if anything, I'm living my best life. Uh, but it's just reality of creating a like work like this that is long, that takes a lot of your attention, is that you have to take time from something else. And, you know, you have to plan your social work. Uh, now I was able to build friendships where people actually respect that. I got situations before when people didn't respect that, when people didn't like that I'm drawing or they didn't take it seriously. They almost took it like, you know, like the same as 
somebody's watching Netflix, I don't know, they will be like, what to do? And I will be like, draw it, like, ah, drop it, let's go. You know, they would not say that I'm drawing, it's just like a job. Only I decide if I'm, I'm stopping that. <laughs> you don't get to tell me or you like don't assume that it is not important. And also like to the friends that come later in my life when I already been drawing, like after like post my comic hiatus, people who came into my life, to them I just call the comic work. So people when I say what to do, I'm saying working. And people seem to understand that better rather than I'm saying I'm working on my comic. They're like, oh, I guess she's doing her hobby. <laughs> That's she can she don't need to do it right now necessarily because friends are like asking her out or whatever. So I don't know. It's always this thing you have to balance for me, I suppose. I mean, when people ask me how to draw more, how to create comics, again, I always feel that people want me to tell them some easy solution. People want me to tell them how, like, how to do it easier. Or they assume it's easy. Maybe they don't want to, you know, they don't ask me that, like, that's what they want to know, not because they just want to cheat. It's because they think it is. But the thing is, a lot of the things that look like there was a lot of hard work, it's because there was a lot of hard work and there was a lot of time that was put in there. That's why those things look like they look. They labor intensive and that's just the reality of things. And a lot of the times people will ask me, what do I need to draw? Like, I start getting into drawing and then I couldn't and I started getting into it again and I couldn't. The thing is, you really have to dedicate your time and you have to take it seriously. I do more lighthearted motivational videos on my channel, but at the same time, you have to take it seriously. If you're not gonna take it seriously, nothing gonna happen. If you think about, it's like, you're gonna start drawing and then you're gonna fall in love with this and then you're gonna do it every day, it's not gonna happen. You have to have certain attitude of, I gotta do it, certain attitude of that's something that I have to sit down and do. It's kinda like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, compare it to workout to be honest uh, because if, even I like I work out every day but it's not the same <laughs> like obviously this is way more pleasurable but this it should be a level of discipline to start to so every day to just go and start doing this task once you start drawing like the hardest part is decide okay I'm drawing right now I'm just sitting and I'm drawing this is the hardest part honestly just to start it and then once you're there then you will start enjoying it. But the enjoyment that comes when you start, it's not gonna last till the next session. So after you start, if you stop drawing for today, so to get drawing next time, you have to, again, make this effort to sit down and start drawing. And then once you start drawing for this session, you're gonna be good. It's that. And then when you do enough of this session, then your work starts calling you. But it's all building up effect. If you wanna start drawing, you have to do this effort of put yourself on the seat and start drawing again and again and again. And it's a lot of part of it is habit. If I drew only when I felt, I, d I don't know, at this point it's hard for me to tell, like I've been drawing this comic consistently for years and years. It's uh, such a part of my life. I guess to me what this comic does and why I keep returning to it, it gives some purpose to, yeah, it gives me a feeling of purpose and it almost gives like the overar overarching theme to, or like a subject to my drawing. So. I'm the type of person who I don't like doing things just to do them. Like I don't like doing things that are not kind of like adding up to a bigger picture. I don't like doing that. I like doing things if they in the end end up becoming something bigger, you know? So if they add up, for example, I don't know, I'm just repeating the same thing and hoping you get it, but basically, for example, okay, if I let's take some most um, I don't know most basic and materialistic and like lame example for example if I buy expensive thing something expensive piece of item I don't like to buy it just to buy it 
I like to buy it so I can make the most use out of it in the time to come. So if I'm buying expensive computer or expensive tech, I'll never buy expensive TV because I don't I don't care about it this much, but I will put out some cash for a computer. Maybe that has extra stuff that I don't necessarily need for my drawing, but it's something that will help me that every time I will be drawing for months and years, then I will be thinking about it. And basically it contributes to every day to come. If I want to buy like bag or whatever the hell girls do these days, I mean, me too, like I buy these bags or whatever. I don't like just buying them to have them just one bag for some reason. I like to buy a bag that I know I will be using many times and the next bag I buy it's adds to collection. They can work together. I don't know. I don't know if it can apply to, to comic at all, but it's the same for drawing. If I want to draw and I sit and draw and spend hours of drawing and then I create this one drawing to post it for one day at, during like one day and that's it. And then I have to draw another thing like that's it. I don't like that. I feel like I put so much work for absolutely nothing for just very short period of time of payoff. But if I'm creating a comic, every page I draw, it adds to the story. It adds to the world. I don't like this brick. <laughs> the brick bench. I don't know. It looks so so clean. Why? No, I don't like it. Let's 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 make it more ragged. It looks like a just a very like a tube oh, I don't like it let's do something about it let's make it crack open does it no that fucking sucks wait a second <laughs> I don't like how it looks I don't like the shape all the phallic shapes in my art are gonna be analyzed by critics no I'm kidding I don't give a shit I just don't like the silhouette. I feel it's very boring. That's better. That's. Eh. No, like what tree does fo like fall off this clean? No. I don't know. I feel like it's also getting lost. Blends too well with that tree on the back. Let's do something about it. Mm. Yeah, this is the real deal. Real weird stuff that goes through my head when I'm drawing. Let's offset the background tree a little bit and make it a little brighter so this thing stands out a little bit more. And by the way, the comic style is not really like it's just my comic style. And it's also a weird thing. Like, I don't remember. No, I maybe do actually. But it was a long time since I just drew in my standard style, I suppose. The this is my comic style. It's the one that is still very realistic, still very true to my preference, but at the same time, it's still stylized. It's, but the last time I think I draw, I drew in my real style, it was when the Game of Thrones was ending. I did like a series of portraits of Game of Thrones characters. Fun times. Fun times. Yay. Uh, it's okay. Who cares? Like really, it's a, it's a thing on the back. I don't need to. Yeah, sometimes you need to be a little bit more chill about things. Also, I'm wondering how long I've been recording. Because I don't want to bore you guys. But at the same time, you could always click out from the video. So, but yeah, if I create... I still remember what I was talking about, you know? Uh, if I create pages of the comic and I put this drawing and ev I know that every drawing is not only adding to you know every time I draw it's not only contributing to this drawing being finished stop working on this brick <laughs> I don't want to see you anymore go away it's already overworked um, so it is like it's also contributing to the story at large and I feel more sense of purpose in there I actually want to do a video about what does it mean to draw a story that is important or meaningful? I want to talk about this, but probably not going to load you guys with this stuff today. So, yeah, I think I've been recording for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes at this point. So, interesting. I didn't even sneeze once or yawn once. Usually when I'm recording the extended podcast, like I sneeze and I yawn and I don't, there's crazy stuff that you need to cut out like for some reason I, like yarn mostly yarn 
it's so weird. Like every time I record podcast, I yawn maybe seven times and I have to stop recording to yawn. And it didn't today. I guess I was having fun, not like other times. Okay. So yes, I think I will leave this session at that and just post this video maybe tomorrow. See how guys are feeling about it. Maybe nobody cares. <laughs> it's going to have like two views, which is fine. And then I'm going to see how I'm feeling about this video <laughs> if I want to record more. So yeah, that's it for the day. Let's actually look what we drew. Oh, look. I think this thing I even drew too. I'm pretty sure it wasn't like that, but we I started with better thing. No, I started, I think this area wasn't there. But hey, isn't that great? 30 minutes. Just in 30 minutes, you can create your shitty trees in less shitty trees, but not yet finished trees. So yeah, thank you so much, guys, for watching uh, or, yeah, or listening. Thank you so much for being around, sticking around, checking out this video. If you made it to the end, I don't know. If you are insane like that, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much again for being here, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.